and a three day. All right, so as you know, Delilah is a lot of dog. Um, I think genetically she's just a very like stubborn brained, uh, very outwardly motivated. So she's literally motivated by everything around her. She likes to keep her nose to the ground, sniff. Um, and it's really hard to create that engagement that I want. Um, so there is definitely need for really balancing uh, motivation and pressure. So pressure is heat collar, pressure is leash, pressure is spatial pressure, palm collar, things like that. Um, so I definitely want to make sure that I'm giving her proactive guidance, like I'm giving her direction and telling her what I need her to do. But I want to make really, 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 really make sure that I'm following through with that and successfully giving her to do the things I want because I bring it to you. It, if we do not do that, she takes advantage. She's very opportunistic and wants to get her way. So if we're saying, man, whenever I give up, then she's going to continue to repeat those behaviors if she finds success in not listening or doing things that she finds motivating. So something that I don't really think I put a lot of emphasis on with bunches was our marker system. And really the point of that is to create clear communication and make sure that she knows specifically what I'm asking her to do. Um, and I think that clarity through structure uh, helps her be more successful. So a marker is a cue or a sound um, that marks a specific moment in time that I like something. So that marker, marking that exact moment in time, then announces the arrival of reward or relief of pressure, whatever pressure you're using. Um, and obviously you don't have to always be giving her food and things like that. It could be whatever is motivating for her. So freedom to go do something that she wants to, um, verbal praise, or uh, physical affection, things like that. Um, so we have a different, couple different markers. We have good, we have the word okay, which I think we might have done free with bunches, I'm not sure, but I use the word okay with her. Um, no, and I've been using the word out for her. Um, so, yeah, you can all. We have uh, the word good is something that I really use to reward duration. So if I put her into a behavior, uh, sit down, place, uh, stay or wait, um, let's go and come. When I put her into those behaviors, I want her to remain in those behaviors until I release her. So good is gonna be what I use when she goes into behavior. I'm gonna use that to reward, reward her remaining in behavior. Um, so right now she's on her place. If I want to reward her, I'm gonna say good. Do I have And then bring her reward. Or if she's on her place and I see her kind of getting fidgety, I'll just say place to remind her that she's in behavior. Um, when something comes along that is a little bit tempting for her to not want to listen, like she just threw her bone off a second ago and she didn't come off of her place, I say the word good to mark that she remained on there and I'll give her her bone back. Um, and then when I'm okay, or excuse me, when I'm done with her being behavior, I'll say the word okay for her to come out of behavior. You piss. That was, I'm just talking on there. <laughs> good. good girl. No is going to be our interrupter. It's going to be our verbal correction. So if she starts to move off of her kennel or her place, I'll say no, but no to stop that behavior. And I want to make sure that when I'm, she's so strange, when I'm using that verbal no, I wanted that to be, I want that to happen first to give her a chance to respond to that. And if she doesn't, then I can apply physical pressure, whatever, if it's e-collar, if it's leash, or if it's spatial pressure. Place. Good girl. You knock it off of here. Good. Um, and then I use the word out. That is gonna be to, uh, create space between you and her. She's kind of crowding her space. No, place. Good girl. It's so snappy. Um, so if she's kind of like running up to jump on you, I'll, like before she jumps up, I'll say out. If she has something that I want, so we'll do it if she's still a baby toy. Delilah, out. Go ahead. Okay, um, I 
want that to be something that she's responsive to. Um, so that if she's stealing things, has things to finish up. So, so you're not having to chase it around, you're not having to place. Whoa, you're not having to reach in. No, ma'am. Sit. Good. Place. Um, you're not having to reach in and try to take something from her, which can, you know, sometimes create a little bit of conflict. So, pressure. I'm talking about this pressure. I want to make sure you understand what it is. Good place. Your bones right. You're chilly, girl. You just realize that you like treat better. Mm. I don't want that anymore. Place. Um, so pressure is, comes in different forms. It comes in the form of uh, leash pressure, which is really just tension in the leash created by her or created by us. Um, it's e-collar pressure, so holding down that stem button or giving taps. Um, or spatial pressure, spatial pressure, which is just me using my body to kind of move her away. So, so physical contact is just my presence walking into her. As soon as she moves away, I release that pressure. So we're applying pressure to uh, ask for a behavior, to fix a behavior, or for to stop her from coming out of behavior. When no place when we good girl when we have the behavior when she's showing the behavior that we want. That is when we release pressure. That's when we turn the pressure off. So we're, we're, we are rewarding her for uh, essentially giving into the pressure. So if she's walking, trying to starting to walk ahead of me with the leash, I'm going to apply pressure backwards. And when she fixes her positioning, I release the tension, and then I'll say good to mark that moment that she fixed it. Uh, if I want her to come to me and she's running around doing her own thing. If I say no, or if I say come and she blows me off and I say no, when I say come again, I will apply e-collar pressure. I usually go din, 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 din. Not really just a continuous kind of like breaking it up a little bit, but keeping the pressure happening until she starts responding. She's going to do that. Well, I can't talk today. Place. Until she, good. So that's right there, spatial pressure. No. Hey. Miss Sam. You, until she starts running back to me, then I will relieve that pressure. So I'll turn the pressure off when she commits to, to coming back to me. Um, and then that right there, where she started to walk off, I walked into her. And as soon as she put her foot back on, I moved my body away. So each of those things could be used with place, good girl, with different forms of pressure. Like I could have used right here, nope, place. Go ahead. So I just give her a little tap. I use e-collar to keep her on there instead of moving my body towards her. Now she's back with her bone. She's good now. Oh, that's your day. Um, you've, made, you've distracted me and I've lost what I was talking about. Oh, you just me. Um, but yeah, so we want to make sure that we are giving her a clear direction. Um, that is something that's very helpful, helpful for her to understand what we're asking. Remember, she doesn't speak human, she doesn't speak English, so we have to speak with her in a language that she understands. And I found that a lot of times when we start saying a bunch of things to our dogs while giving direction or asking them to do something, um, that creates a little bit of white noise for them. They learn that they start to blow you off because they don't understand anything that you're saying. So they're just, they just continue listening to you. But if you switch over to when you're trying to tell them to do something, you say, Delilah, sit down, no, good, okay, whatever, using those words that she's been taught the meaning of, you'll find that a dog is much more likely to actually listen to what you have to say because those words have value and she understands what they mean. All right, girlfriend. So I have the e-collar on her already. Um, and something that I found with her is how I put it on really determines how I use it because she has so much like neck stuff going on. So um, I had it on a little bit, I guess not tight enough at one point, because um, I don't want to choke her out, obviously. And I was having to go to really, um, okay, I was having to go to really high levels. Like I was getting up to like 30 and 40 as a working level like where she was just starting to respond. Um, which is like, it's fine. If that's her, her level that she's first noticing, then that's her level. Like I have plenty of dogs that, um, 
their levels are much higher than the average dog. Like normally it's like a four or five or a six is their working level and hers is like it was a 30 and a 35 and just me it just doesn't I don't like that but you know it's not what I feel it's what she feels so um, but if I have it on a little bit tighter and I'm making sure that those contact points are hitting right up here behind her ear I was able to get her to listen to more of like a 10 or a 15 which is a little bit higher still but um, significantly lower than the, the, the 30 or 40. <coughs> so Hi. I want it to be right up behind this big old shenanigan right here in her ears and I want the excuse <coughs> me hello all her little <coughs> chin chin skins to be kind of stuck under there like pull them pull them through. She kind of loud neck me. Um, but we do want to make sure that so she has you know the off to the side up here on the top. I mean I need to be thinner you getting me. I might have to start this video to show this specifically. Um, Right, there you go. Right off to the side, there's this nice muscling and I want the heat collar to be right there. So it's gonna be almost seemingly too tight. Um, so I could just barely kind of move it around, but anything looser, actually I might put it a whole tighter, anything looser and she, it's just not working correctly because of all that extra meatage. So, okay, you can come off. Um, Definitely make sure that the collar is on tight. Um, she doesn't respond to the vibrate really, so that's not even a good backup if it's not on tight enough. When we're giving her commands again, make sure we're giving her the specific words that she knows. Like she went over there, I'm going to tell her to come. Delilah, come. Good girl. Now she's blowing me off. Nope. Come. Good job. I know you couldn't see that because it's following me around, but there's a a little, there's stuff over here for her to sniff. So she's sniffing that instead of listening to me. All right. I'm going to cut the video off right here so I cannot have to take four days to upload this. <laughs>